Hey guys, what's going on? Jab here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit more technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and more specifically, in today's video, I wanted to explain why exactly I believe a major breakout is coming to Bitcoin here over the next week or so. I'm not exactly sure what day it's going to come on, of course, but I do believe, based on the technicals that we've looked at in the past couple of videos, and the technicals I'm going to be showing you in today's video, that we're going to see not just a small breakout on Bitcoin coming pretty soon, we're going to see a very major one, and I do believe that's going to happen relatively soon. Which direction that will come? Well, we'll discuss that in today's video. We've been discussing that for the last few, but I do believe a major move is coming to Bitcoin, and we do want to understand why so that we can then be prepared for it. Following that, we have a little bit of news coming from Binance and a couple of other cryptocurrency exchanges relating to Craig Wright's Bitcoin SV. If you guys are familiar with Craig Wright, he's an Australian who claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, and of course he has not been able to prove that, and many people call him a fraud. And his cryptocurrency Bitcoin SV, which was indeed a hard fork of Bitcoin because he, claiming to be Satoshi Nakamoto, didn't like the way that Bitcoin was being developed, decided that he was going to go ahead and start a new Bitcoin. And now that Bitcoin is being delisted because of a lot of drama coming out of Craig Wright. Definitely a juicy story that we're going to be discussing in today's video and a relatively important one also because it highlights the importance and the power of exchanges in the cryptocurrency market and maybe brings to bear and brings to light the importance of decentralized exchanges, but we'll be discussing that a little bit later on in today's video. So if you guys do enjoy today's video, definitely consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button, and smashing that notification bell, guys. It does help out the channel when you do it, and I would be appreciative if you did it. But without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Bitcoin is currently trading around $5,035.47 at the time of recording this video, and at the time of recording this video, Bitcoin has been relatively bearish here over the last couple of hours especially in this last candlestick here. Bitcoin is down about $35, about point, about 1%, not a major downside move, but Bitcoin has come down here in the last 24 hours and come down to test $5,000 again. As you saw in yesterday's video, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and before breakout happens, I wanted to reaffirm or excuse me, adjust my prediction on what would happen to Bitcoin. Before that, I was saying that I expected a Bitcoin breakout to the downside. And I do still think that that is a very major possibility, maybe even slightly more likely, but a one to wait and see what Bitcoin does here in between this level of support at $5,025 and this level of resistance at $5,200 before we start making any major calls. But there is, I want to keep you guys realizing that there is a very major chance that we do break bearish here. I just want to wait before I start making any major calls until we do break that level of support. Then we'll start talking about major bearish price action. But in today's video, I don't necessarily want to talk about all that much about which direction Bitcoin is going to break out. I want to talk about the fact that there, or my opinion, I should say, that there does seem to be a very major Bitcoin breakout coming. And then we'll discuss which direction a little bit later on in the video. And one of the major reasons that I say a major Bitcoin breakout is coming is partially because we've seen massive, massive bullishness and massive movements coming out of Bitcoin here lately. But in, co in stark contrast to that, we've seen that Bitcoin has come down here and traded basically completely sideways here for the last couple of days. Ever since about the 11th of April, Bitcoin has been doing nothing but trading sideways. Five days of sideways tra uh, trading, perfectly sideways trading. We've seen very low volatility in this following a period of major volatility right over here is something that is slightly, and not concerning, but something that is definitely trying to tell us something, I would say. I do believe that we're going to see some kind of return of volatility coming to Bitcoin, especially considering how long Bitcoin has been here in this bear market accumulation phase, and that we believe that a Bitcoin bull market is on the horizon coming within the next three to six months or so. I do believe that volatility needs to come back, and what I think we're seeing right here is actually a type of consolidation pattern. And you guys typically understand a consolidation pattern to be something like this. This is a classic example of a consolidation pattern, also known as an ascending triangle pattern. But in a pattern like this, Bitcoin is squeezed in on itself and continues moving in and gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and then you see a breakout. Well, I think that we're seeing something similar to that, but instead of with a triangle pattern, we're seeing some kind of consolidation happening within a trading channel. We're seeing a perfectly sideways trading channel with two horizontal levels, 5,200 and 5,020. $5. These two levels are providing support and resistance and Bitcoin's trading around in them. And in those levels, Bitcoin is being constrained. I believe that there's a lot more tension in the market right now than we're actually being able to witness because of these levels of support and resistance. I think the bulls and the bears are relatively evenly matched. The bears, I think, are just ever so slightly stronger right now. But because they're so evenly matched, it's hard for Bitcoin to break either bullish 
or bearish because both of those factions are so strong. They're holding Bitcoin in here in this kind of stalemate in between relatively tight levels of support and resistance that we found ourselves move into here over the last couple of days. And as I've talked about in many videos in the past, and as I talk about in several videos in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, when you see Bitcoin build tension, you see it build tension, build tension, build tension. It coils up like a spring, as we saw over here especially as we saw over here building up to this breakout you see that tension coil up and it builds that potential energy like a spring eventually you see a breakout and when you finally do see that fall and you see the earthquake rupture and you do see the uh, tension be released it typically results in a major breakout and that's not just a bunch of theoretical chart reading that we're talking about that is trying to uh it's not just a bunch of theoretical chart reading that we're using to go ahead and determine that there should be a major breakout coming we can also determine when major breakouts are coming with volume and volume is a very good example of this because it's a way of technically and visually highlighting that tension that i'm talking about and as you can see here over the last several weeks over the last two weeks in fact ever since bitcoin broke bullish out here bitcoin's volume has been declining and as you guys know when bitcoin or any other market is in a consolidation pattern like this you typically see volume decline as well. And when you see that volume decline, a lot of times that volume returns in an explosive manner when you break either bullish or bearish. It doesn't really matter which direction you break in that scenario. But a similar thing is what we're seeing right now. Bitcoin has been trading sideways here more or less for the last couple of weeks. And in that time, Bitcoin's volume has been continuing to decline. It's not as obvious on the four hourly chart, but if you come out to the daily chart, it becomes apparent that Bitcoin's volume has been continuing to go to the downside, continuing to trend downward while Bitcoin has been trading sideways here. And as Bitcoin is in about a two week long consolidation pattern, really, you could draw this as a gigantic pennant out here on the four hour, uh, out here on the hourly chart and the four hourly chart you could just draw this as a massive pennant with this being an uptrend and this level up here at 5350 being a level of resistance you could draw it like that what i think we're seeing is a major major uh type of bull pennant and a major level of consolidation now whether or not bitcoin breaks bullish out of that or not is yet to be determined as i talked about in yesterday's video i want to wait and see whether bitcoin breaks this resistance level right here at five thousand two hundred dollars or so or this support level at five thousand thirty dollars or so before I start making major predictions about which way Bitcoin breaks. If Bitcoin breaks to the downside here, we're probably going to continue that trend because your trend is your friend and Bitcoin will continue going to the downside in accordance with many of those bearish technicals that we've discussed in previous videos. But if Bitcoin, on the other hand, does break $5,200 and starts moving to the upside, perhaps some of those bearish technicals will be ignored for a little while longer and Bitcoin can continue moving to the upside. I'll be honest with you guys, even with what I said in yesterday's video, I do still think that there is a slightly higher chance that we do break to the downside here. Now, I don't want to go jump into conclusions. I don't want to go saying that we are absolutely certainly going to break to the downside just yet. There is still a case for the bulls. That all being said, I do still want to be careful because there is definitely bearish sentiment in the market. Maybe not bearish sentiment, I should say, but there are definitely bearish technicals in the market that we need to be paying attention to. So I'm not saying right now, I'm not making a prediction that we're going to break bearish, but if I were to put my money on it, and of course I am, guys, I'm in the market also, I would expect the market to break bearish with an ever so slightly more uh, higher percent chance than breaking bullish. Now, guys, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about on Bitcoin here. I think we're building a lot of tension. I think the volume tells us that. And I think we're going to see a major breakout because every time we see Bitcoin's volume uh, decline like that, we do tend to see a major breakout. You see it in consolidation patterns. Whenever Bitcoin's volume is in, uh, whenever Bitcoin's charge is in a consolidation pattern here, volume declines. That is a classical textbook example of a breakout. Whenever you see that volume decline, eventually you see the breakout. You see this kind of thing show up on longer term trends as well. Bitcoin's volume declined here for the majority of 2018. And after that, we finally saw a breakout here. Bitcoin's volume and volatility, those two things, those two fundamentals and technicals are typically corollary. As volume goes down, so too normally does volatility. And when we see that volatility continue to decline, a lot of times it's indicative that we're in this kind of uh, this kind of pennant here or this kind of triangle pattern here. And eventually you see a major breakout and a return of that volume. Similar thing has happened recently. Bitcoin was uh, losing volatility here, losing volatility, losing volume as well. And then Bitcoin broke bullish and that volume returned for a couple of days in this recent breakout. I think a similar thing is going to happen on a shorter term time frame here. Bitcoin's volume is going to return in a major way. And corollary with that, so too will its volatility and we will see a very major breakout when Bitcoin finally decides which direction it wants that breakout to go. Anyway, that's all we want to talk about for the technicals on the chart for today, but we do want to continue talking about some news here coming out of cryptocurrency. 
I don't believe I've ever talked about Craig Wright on the channel before, and I don't believe I've ever talked about Bitcoin SV on the channel before. There may or may not be a reason for that. Shots absolutely fired. But anyway, we have four articles up here, actually three articles up and a, a, a poll over here, which uh, you can read that and see what that says. We'll talk about that in a second. But each one of these articles talks about something different relating to the same story. But we want to go ahead and start right here. Binance's CZ threatens to... Uh, Anathemat anathematize Craig Wright's Bitcoin SV. I, I, did, I, I consider myself to have a relatively large vocabulary. I had to check that. That basically means to, um, that kind of means to uh, just uh, banish, if you will. You can go ahead and Google that for the exact word. Pretty much he's saying that he wants to, uh, Bitcoin uh, SV, uh, CZ, excuse me, is saying that he's going to uh, excommunicate. Uh, Craig Wright, if you will. Anyway, Bitcoin SV appeared as a result of a hard fork forced by a group of developers read by, led by uh, Australian Craig Wright. I talked about that earlier on in the video. He didn't really like the way that Bitcoin was being developed, and I'm not going to get into all of the history of Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin. I'm not going to get into all of that. Needless to say, there was a hard fork. Bitcoin SV was created, and Craig Wright was behind it. Craig Wright claims that he is Satoshi Nakamoto. There is little to no evidence of that, and many people call him a fraud. There you go. There's your exposition. Well, let's continue. Craig Wright goes to extremes. Like I said, many people call him a fraud. And there's a fellow on Twitter named Hoddlenot who didn't really like Craig Wright all that much. Recently, Craig Wright began to threaten a Twitter user going by the name of Hoddlenot with a legal suit. The user had been trolling Craig with various, hasht various hashtags like fake Toshi and hashtag Craig Wright is a fraud. Oh no, how dare he make fun of someone who is, as is more than likely not Satoshi Nakamoto. He promised a bounty of $5,000 in Bitcoin SV, so more like like two or $3,000 in Bitcoin SV, to those who can put a name to the real identity of Hodlonaut because Craig Wright has a very fragile ego. Later on, Craig's legal team prepared an official letter with threats of a lawsuit ready to be sent to Hodlonaut as soon as he was identified. And uh, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, I keep wanting to call uh, CZ Xi Jinping, shout, shout, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. Shangping Zhao, there we go. The head of Binance, the largest cryptocurrency exchange. I always mess up his name. I do apologize, CZ. I don't know why he'd be watching this video, but I'm sorry anyway. Uh, Shangping Zhao was not a very big fan of this. We'll get to that in a second. He did not really like Craig Wright literally threatening people with lawsuits over hashtags. And for this alone, not even considering everything else Craig Wright has done, screw Craig Wright. You don't go threatening people with lawsuits because they're trolling you on Twitter. Not a fan of that. There's a thing called the First Amendment here in America. Maybe you should check out what that means. Uh, anyway, enough shade. Let's continue on with the news. Chengping Zhao, the head of Binance, the largest cryptocurrency exchange, blah, 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 blah. Basically said, Craig Wright is not Satoshi. Any more of this, blah, and we delist. He was talking about exactly what Craig Wright was doing in re in, re in regards to threatening uh, legal suits against uh, this huddle or not fellow. And we're going to go ahead and skip through the rest of this. I do want to talk about this. The real Satoshi, uh, uh, CZ said, the real, Sato the real Satoshi can digitally sign any message to prove it. This is as simple as breathing for him or her, and we have the pub key. Until then, everyone is Satoshi except Craig Wright. Ouch. Masterpiece, you have my full support, Peter. To be clear, I don't choose sides on technology. We'll let the market do that. I am against fraud, such as lying to be someone. As such, it is strongly my opinion that Craig Wright is a fraud. And guys, you have to realize Satoshi Nakamoto allegedly, or we can assume, still has control of the public key, of, excuse me, of the private key that he has had ever since 2009. So if Craig Wright really was, if he really was Satoshi Nakamoto, why can't he prove it by using that private key? Did he lose it? I don't know. It's kind of convenient if he did, considering he is the guy that created Bitcoin after all. Anyway, continuing on here, there's a little bit that I want to discuss here. Uh, finally, we seem, we, uh, pretty much what happened is a little while ago, Binance decided to go ahead and go through with that threat that CZ made. Any more of this lot and we delist. CZ threatened to delist Bitcoin SV because Craig Wright was being uh, Craig Wright, and that went ahead and happened. Bitcoin has taken down Bitcoin SV effective as of the 22nd of April. Bitcoin SV will no longer be listed on Binance, and Binance is not the only cryptocurrency exchange to do so. Shapeshift has also taken down, uh, uh, excuse me, Bitcoin SV. And Kraken seems like it wants to be doing the same. That's why I have this poll up here. Kraken asks on Twitter, should Kraken delist Bitcoin SV? And 72% of those who voted said uh, yes. And 21% of them said they don't care. 7% of them said no. Which is definitely an interesting thing. It's not. It doesn't seem like Bitcoin SV or Craig Wright are all that popular in the cryptocurrency community any, anymore. Doing something like threatening someone with a legal suit because they were trolling you on Twitter doesn't tend to make you the most popular person in as a libertarian of a community as the cryptocurrency industry. Not exactly the greatest political move there, Craig Wright. 
maybe you shouldn't do that again. Either way, Bitcoin SV has now been delisted on Binance, or at least it will be delisted by the 22nd of April, and the same thing is happening on Shapeshift. Kraken seems like it may be following suit. We can go ahead and read through a lot of these things. CZ was threatened and Binance was threatened with a lawsuit by Craig Wright because Craig Wright really loves giving his lawyers things to do for some reason. I, I don't know why, but, you know, people like to sue people when they don't like them. And CZ, being the G that he is, shot back and said, Oh, and it won't be the first time. We've learned a few things. The losers pay our legal fees. Ouch. We have a number of very good and expensive lawyers. And CZ brings up a very important point here. The problem for most people in the legal system is that you have to front the legal costs, which can amount to millions of dollars up front. And since CZ is the head of Binance, one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges in the industry, they can afford to do that and then get that money back after when they inevitably win a case like that. But as they talk about here, the key problem with our legal system is that you have to mount those expenses up front. And I'm not going to get into the politics of that, but he does bring up an interesting point. If you guys want to discuss that, with me in the Discord server in the comment section. We can talk about that issue in the legal system. I do agree that that is an issue in the legal system, although I don't like saying that something's an issue without having a solution, and I myself don't currently have a solution to that, of course, so we'll go ahead and leave that there. One last thing that I want to talk about here comes with this last uh, tweet. It should be down here at the bottom. If we look all the way down here, this quote, this tweet right here by Nick underscore Carter on Twitter is the last thing that I want to talk about to wrap this up. To be very clear, I am not a fan of Bitcoin SV. I'm not necessarily a fan of, Bit of, of Craig Wright. Bitcoin SV is not the thing that I really have anything against. I do have something against Craig Wright for, for this, um, for trying to sue someone over something you said on Twitter. I'm not a fan of that. Not cool. Don't do that. You're not going to have my support if you do that. I don't care who you are. But with all of that said, this person does bring up an interesting point. To be clear, Binance was absolutely right to delist Bitcoin SV because a tiny minority hash rate coin is incredibly insecure and liable to be exploited. He's absolutely right. The larger the mining community on a coin, the more secure it is. That's why it would take literally tens of billions of dollars in mining power, and we see it coming from miles away if Bitcoin were to try and be hacked. There's one way to hack Bitcoin, and that is to take over 51% of the mining power, which you would have to do at a state level, or you'd have to have a company spend billions and billions of dollars to do. Bitcoin is extremely secure because of that. So much smaller cryptocurrencies that rely on proof of work like Bitcoin SV are not anywhere near as secure and much more vulnerable to attack. Therefore, they are less uh, secure and you shouldn't be putting necessarily as much of your money in them for that reason. But this last sentence that this person says is something I want to talk about here to wrap this video up. But it also does evidence how much power exchanges have. And that is a very good point. One thing that we talk about here in cryptocurrency a lot is the idea of decentralization. And one problem that we have in cryptocurrency is the lack of decentralization. This is a major reason why decentralized exchanges are becoming a thing. Because while Binance and all these other cryptocurrency exchanges, they do believe in, decentral in decentralization, I'm not in any way claiming that they're against that core principle and that core tenet of cryptocurrency. I'm not saying that in the slightest. They do seem to be in favor of that. CZ seems to be a pretty cool guy. I do like him. While I am a fan of a lot of the people that run these ex exchanges, there is a major problem in cryptocurrency markets, and that is the power of the exchanges and the power of the other companies surrounding cryptocurrency. As you got, you guys may remember, too, a little over about a year and a half ago, the uh, the the um, money provider. I'm I'm in the middle of commentary mode, so I'm blanking on the name. But there is a uh, company that creates uh, miners, uh, Bitmain. That's the company I'm trying to think of. Bitmain, they create miners and they were releasing miners and they were forcing people to pay for these miners through Bitcoin Cash. And they're one of the major uh, personal miner creators. So if you wanted to buy a miner, you pretty much had to do it through Bitcoin Cash. And that was kind of an example of a major company other than an exchange in the cryptocurrency market altering the way that the market was run and altering what we did in the market because they had all the power, because they had a monopoly, if you want to use that word. Bitmain wasn't a monopoly, but they did have a major a, a major part of the market share there. And a similar thing is true for the exchanges. If you get three or four exchanges together and they decide to just go ahead and blacklist a cryptocurrency, well, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. What are you going to do? Take them to the courts? These guys have hundreds of millions of dollars. As CZ himself said, they can take anyone to court. And if they win, and they probably will because they have some of the best lawyers on the planet, what are you going to do about it? If you have a cryptocurrency that doesn't go with the what may be the political climate in the cryptocurrency market, and some of these exchanges start delisting your cryptocurrency, what are you going to do about it? You're going to go to decentralized exchanges, which is why we need decentralized exchanges. I'm worried about something happening in the cryptocurrency market and the cryptocurrency industry that has already happened to the rest of the internet, where you have major companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube under Google and Alphabet Inc. You have um, Amazon, 
a couple of other major uh, major corporations taking over the space and then them basically being the government of the internet. We don't want to see the same thing happen to cryptocurrency and we do want to be careful about that, which is why I think we should be supporting decentralized exchanges. As much as I'm a fan of Binance, I use Binance all the time, and as much as I'm a fan of CZ, having too much power in the hands of a small oligarchy is not exactly what I think is the best for cryptocurrency. And I don't think in the long term it would be good because that kind of power can be usurped by those who don't necessarily have the best of intentions. We've seen that happen time and time again in history and we've seen that happen time and time again here in the last 20 years of the internet as young of a history as it is so guys i do think that we want to be careful about that that isn't necessarily a concern for now because decentralized exchanges are coming online as we speak but with all that said that is something we want to keep an eye on i think that was one of the major points of this story even though it came from one sentence at the bottom of an article i think this is probably just as important if not more important this one sentence right here as is the rest of the entire story about Craig Wright's Bitcoin SV being delisted. The fact that he was blacklisted basically from every single, or not every single, but uh, several major exchanges and Bitcoin SV will obviously have its price tanked from this is an example of what can happen if you get on the wrong side of the governance, if you will, of the cryptocurrency industry. And that is something that we want to look out for in the future. Anyway, guys, I think I made my points on that. And I think I made my point about the breakout here on Bitcoin. So tell me in the comment section down below if you enjoyed today's video. Did you get some value out of the technical analysis portion of today's video? Do you think a major breakout is coming to Bitcoin? And if so, which direction do you think that breakout will come? Do you expect Bitcoin to break bullish? Or do you expect Bitcoin to break bearish? I'm interested, as always, to hear your opinions in the comment section down below. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.